A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus into the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good day to you. And happy Sunday of Lent. This is the first uh, Sunday uh, of our Lenten journey. We, uh, I'm Father Francis. I'm here in my little uh office here, here at uh, Our Divine Savior Parish, and I'm just saying hello and just going to give a real simple, hopefully a little simple, Lenten reflection today. The gospel is simple in its brevity, although it has lots to offer for our reflection, uh, certainly the example of Jesus going out into the desert. Uh, he goes out in the desert, yes, uh, for... Uh, to, to draw closer to God in prayer and fasting. <clears throat> and he's also tempted by Satan, we're told in this gospel. And then we're told that uh, he was among wild beasts, kind of a dangerous place. But then the angels came and ministered to him. And I think that <clears throat> when I think about Lent, a lot of us, and I, I think I said this <clears throat> you know, in some of my reflections in the morning mass, and I think even I touched on it just last Sunday, that a lot of people, when they look at the season of Lent, they sometimes approach it from kind of a negative perspective. Let's face it, you know, it is not necessarily fun to practice abstinence and fast. But believe it or not, these are things that actually when they're practiced, and they don't even have to really do a lot of, you know, in-depth, heavy-duty, you know, lifting, if you will, spiritually, uh, a God is really there with us. And that's what this whole gospel is about in uh, our first Sunday, um, Sunday of Lent this year, is that we follow the example of Jesus, and we go out into the desert with him. Um <clears throat> Now, what a lot of people do when they think of Lent is they think of, you know, again, kind of, oh, well, I have to deprive myself. I have to give up things, you know, whether it's ice cream, chocolate, TV, video games, golf. Uh, some people also like to maybe give up the adult libations. And that becomes very challenging at St. Patty's Day for some of us now. But anyway, the, the bottom line is that uh, what I like to sell, tell people is maybe what, and again, I'm speaking to myself first and foremost, instead of looking at Lent as kind of a, a negative proposition, I like to look at Lent as a positive proposition. And why do I say that? Because God comes and he invites us to come and know him. And Far from being kind of a negative experience, actually Lent can be one of the greatest experiences in, in our lives because it, it opens us up to the beautiful gift of conversion, recognizing that God is truly with us and he invites us to come and to know him better. So last week I said to the dear folks here at Our Divine Savior, instead of looking at Lent as a time to give something up, why don't we try to look at Lent as a time when we open up something good that God has been longing to give us for maybe a long, long time? When we decide, for example, when we're going to maybe try to get our weight managed better, you know, lose some weight, get, get some exercise back in our lives. Sure, the first few days and weeks, we're going to feel some soreness. Uh, we're we're going to maybe be disappointed in the fact that we've maybe allowed our body not to be as healthy as it once was when we were younger. But the good news is that once we dedicate ourselves uh, to just a simple, maybe it could be 30 minutes of walking every day, as simple as that. 
Maybe it could be something looking at our diet, you know, eliminating something that maybe, even though we enjoy it, if we let go of it for, say, 30 or 40 days, and then see how we feel afterwards, we say, wow. You know, what some people have discovered, uh, and again, I'm not here to, I'm not a dietitian, so I'm not prescribing any diets for anybody. I'm not trying to practice medicine without a license. I'm just trying to share with you some things that I've learned along the way. Some people have, have discovered, not everybody, and I'm not saying everybody should, but some people have discovered that getting rid of, say, wheats and grains in your life for a period of days can maybe help with your arthritis. It might even help with some brain fog, you know. So if you eliminate <clears throat> things like sugar and processed foods uh, for a period of, say, 30 to 40 days, a nice, you know, Lenten fast of those things, you might discover that you feel better than you have in years. So <clears throat> a lot of times, you know, instead of looking at Lent as, you know, I have to do something, you know, in order to please God or, or you know, maybe even make the church happy or whatever, whatever it is, don't look at it like that. Don't look at it like that. You don't need to look at it like that. What I like to look at Lent is a time when I discover, you know, some really wonderful things that God has already blessed me with. I guess that's what I'm trying to say is don't look at Lent as something like you have to give up all of this stuff and you have to punish yourself and, you know, you have to, you know, suffer and you have to, you know, be uh, in deprivation mode. That's not what it's about. You know, so that God will somehow now bless me because I've, I've punished myself enough. Now God come and love me. Well, I think Lent is a time when we actually discover how much God already loves us and has already blessed us. And I'll close with this because I think it's kind of important. A lot of times we pray. We pray and we ask God to help us. You know, whether, whatever, whatever it is. And <clears throat> I'm going to say something <clears throat> that some times, some, that even myself, and a lot of other people may be slow to really discover and, and, and recognize. And that is that when we pray, God does answer our prayers. Now, some people say, well, of course he answers our prayers. I don't need you to tell me that. Absolutely. But a lot of people don't recognize or realize that God has answered prayers. And so that's why it's so important that when we you know pray, we write things down and date it. Because a lot of times those prayers will be answered, but they'll be answered kind of, if you will, secretly. They just happen. You know, like when we're asleep. They tell me the, the best time, uh, believe it or not, when weight loss occurs is when we sleep. And that's not me making it up. That's what the, the dietitians and all of the health professionals will tell you. That the reason why rest is so important is that's when your body begins to do all those things of repair and elimination and hydration and all that stuff <clears throat> that your body you know you, that you're unaware of and sometimes the best things happen when we're resting see lent believe it or not i think is a real time of spiritual rest i hope that you know if you've never heard that before you know if you're if you've always looked at lent with kind of a negative or kind of a darkened hue you know kind of a casting in a negative light Try to see it as a positive light. You know, light, you know, springtime's just around the corner in <laughs> here in Chico. <laughs> it's already bloomed, let me tell you. The rose bushes are already blooming off the mines. I'm telling you, they're going crazy. Uh, and I think that, you know, if you have a heart and eyes to see the many times that God has already answered your prayers and blessed you, you're going to be, you know, light years ahead in your spiritual life. Because I think a lot of people, they, they struggle so much and they think that God is so far, far, far away, and they have to somehow now appease him. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, if we need to go to confession, and we know there's serious in our lives, we need to confess that. Well, then just do it. Do it. Don't, don't, neg don't dwell on it. Just do it and get it over with. Because God is, you know, sacrament of penance is not about, you know, again, we use the word penance. It's not about punishment. And, you know, it's not like we're a bunch of criminals and we're, you know, you know having to appease an angry God. He just wants us to be free and happy. And that's one of the beautiful gifts of the sacraments is the sacrament penance is not about punishment. It's about healing, you know. So that's what I want to share with, with you today in this first Sunday of Lent. Instead of looking at Lent as a time you give something up, look at Lent as a time when you open yourself up to a new revelation of God for you. 
Hope you got something on that today. God bless you. And every day, especially during this Lent, Father, Son, Holy Spirit.